All your life you've been wondering how laws are made. You've been sitting up all night thinking about our laws and, and wondering where they come from, right? No. Okay, maybe not. But did you ever wonder what it would be like if you could be in charge of making laws? I bet you could think of a few laws you'd create right away, like putting a video game room in every school, or being able to drive before you're 16. Don't get too carried away, because there's something you need to know. No single person is actually in charge of making our laws. Instead, we have a large group of lawmakers called Congress. If you were one of these people, you would be part of our legislative branch of government. That's the branch that makes the laws. You couldn't get to decide on all the laws by yourself, but that doesn't mean your ideas couldn't be created into laws. Before you can do that, you have to become a part of Congress. And to do that, you must be elected by the people from your state. Congress is divided into two smaller groups, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The first thing you'll have to decide is which one of these groups you want to join. The House of Representatives is pretty big. Right now it has 435 people. Every state gets to elect a certain number of people to join the House of Representatives. How many representatives each state gets depends on how many people live in that state. Now the Senate has a lot fewer people because each state can only elect two senators. Let's see, uh, two senators, 50 states, that's... That means 100 people in the Senate. Okay, so you've already decided to be a senator or a representative. You've already won the election and you're all ready to become a legislator. Legislator is just a fancy word for lawmaker. Now, the first thing you'll get to do is take a trip to Washington, D.C., because that's where Congress takes care of all its business. But what's going to happen when you get there? Won't all those other legislators from all those other states have their own ideas for laws? How will you ever get your great ideas made into laws? The first thing you'll have to do is write down your law. When an idea for a law is first written down, it's called a bill. A bill is like a, a rough draft for a law. Two main things will have to happen before your bill can become a law. First, the majority of the Congress will have to vote for it, and then the President will have to sign it. So, the next thing you want to do is introduce your bill to your group. If you're a senator, you'll introduce your bill only to the Senate. If you're a representative, you'll introduce your bill to the House of Representatives. When you introduce your bill, someone will read it out loud to the group so everyone will know exactly what it says. Then you'll have a chance to tell the group why you think your bill is the best idea ever and why it should become a law. And since your bill is the best idea ever, all the other senators and representatives will vote for it and make it a law immediately, right? Uh, wrong. There's an entire process a law must go through first before it can even be voted on. Usually there's a committee that will study your bill to make sure it won't lead to any problems you didn't think of. They'll also figure out how much it would cost for your idea to become a law. But that's not all. Even if you do have the best idea ever, there might be some people who don't like it. These people will get to have their say, and then the group as a whole will vote to see whether or not your bill will become a law. Now you may have to make some compromises and change up your bill a little bit. Maybe now you can see why there's two things that nobody should ever watch being made. Hot dogs and laws. But it's too late now. You're already knee deep in the business of lawmaking, and you've got a bill all ready to become a law. Once your group votes in favor of your bill, it gets sent to the other group for a vote. Yay! Yay. So if you're in the House of Representatives, and your bill passes there, next it will go to the Senate. Both the House of Representatives and the Senate vote separately to approve the bill. And once they do, congratulations, your bill has just passed through Congress. But wait, you're not done yet. In order for your bill to become a law, you have to have the President sign it. If the President likes your bill, great, it'll get signed with no problem. If he doesn't like it, however, he might veto it to reject it. If your bill gets vetoed, there's still hope for your great idea to become law. All you have to do is get Congress to vote on it again. When they do, if two-thirds of Congress votes in favor of your bill, it will become a law whether the President likes it or not. Now, if you can't get two-thirds of the Congress to approve your bill, you may have to make some changes to it so the President will like it and sign it. After all of this, when your amazing idea is finally a law, it's time to say goodbye to your bill. Your bill is like a baby who's all grown up. It's not a bill anymore. It's now a statute, which means it's an official written law. Your statute will join all the other written laws as part of our code, which is our official set of laws. Now everyone in the nation will have to follow the law that you thought of. Pretty cool, huh? You know, I've always had this idea to, to make, a, make it a law that you have to eat pizza on Fridays. Mm -hmm.